Okay, so now we have proved that the function g of t is continuous. Now, the next part of the proof. So the next part of the proof is that if you are given that the derivative of phi with respect to t, if it is continuous, so if this is continuous, then we have to show that we can take the derivative of gt. So basically gt is integral a to b phi st ds, right? So you can take the derivative and the derivative is given by a to b dou phi dou t ds, okay? So that's the next step. That's the next part of the proof. So here's some things. Um, if dou phi dou t is continuous, then we know that this particular integral, the integral, uh, so it depends on t, okay? It's a function of t, this is continuous, okay? This is clear because what we just now proved that if you have a continuous function, uh, two variable continuous function on a re rectangle, then if you integrate it with respect to the first variable, then the result is again continuous, right? So the same thing is happening here. So the partial derivative, it's a function, two, var two, two value, sorry, function uh, with two variables input and uh, it's continuous, so integrating it, so this is continuous, okay? All right. Now, the only thing that needs to be done is that you have to prove the derivative is given like this. Derivative of g is given uh, like this integral. So let's do that. So for this, what I'm going to do is let's consider this partial derivative, st. Now, this is continuous, continuous on this rectangle, a, b, c, d. And it is, well, it's complex valued. Now. Again, the same argument as before, this is compact and continuous functions on compact sets are uniformly continuous. So this is uniformly continuous, okay? So what does that mean? So that means if you are given an epsilon, then there exists a delta, which depends on epsilon, such that, um, you know, if you pick two points, S prime and T prime and S T, uh, which differ by delta epsilon, then the partial derivative with respect to T, they differ. So partial derivative at S prime T prime uh, and partial derivative at S T, they differ by epsilon, okay? So they are bounded by epsilon. So if you pick any two points, such that they differ by delta epsilon, then this happens. Just the same argument as before. Uh, now, in particular, I can fix S, right? Fix S for S in A, B, right? Between A and B. And pick T prime and T in such a way that the difference is basically, uh, so this, Okay, so this calculation is basically square root of uh, s minus s square plus t prime minus t square. And this is absolute value of t prime minus t. And so this is what we have. Now, I will pick this to be less than delta epsilon, okay? So these two points with the s is the same, so s is fixed here, they differ by delta epsilon, okay? So by fixed, I mean they are the same S, okay? So S can be any value between A and B, but for these two points, the S, the first coordinates are the same, okay? Then what we have is this implies from the uniform continuity of dou phi dou t, this implies that the partial derivative of phi with respect to t at S t prime and partial derivative of phi with respect to t at S t, they differ so they are bounded above by epsilon, okay? By uniform continuity of dou phi dou t. Okay, so that we have. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, do this for t naught, okay? So I'm gonna fix t naught here. So t 
T naught is fixed. So let me pick T naught to be some number uh, between. So it should be in C D, and I'm fixing it. So that means that's that's I fixed it. It's a number right now. Okay, uh, and all then we have then what does the previous statement translate into? So T prime minus T naught if they differ by delta epsilon, then uh, and you are you have s any s between a and b then you have dou phi dou t s t prime minus dou phi dou t s t naught this is less than epsilon okay all right we have this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to integrate this from t naught to t so this uh, this one dou phi dou t s t prime minus dou phi dou t s t naught and um, this will happen so let's change okay so i should i should specify i'm integrating with respect to this one okay the second variable here so dou phi dou t s tau and minus dou phi dou t s t naught okay so Okay, T naught is fixed now. So, and I'm also in a way saying that I'm picking S from A and B. Okay, so this absolute value, well, this is bounded above by integral T naught to T, dou phi dou T, S tau minus dou phi dou T, S T naught, and D tau. Now, now, as you can see here, tau and t naught, tau is between t and t naught. And as before, t naught. Mm, so I should say here, how, what is t here, right? Okay. I'm integrating from t naught to t, and your t is such that they differ by delta epsilon. Okay. Sorry for the notation here. So before I wrote t prime right and then so i should have told you like when i'm integrating it it should be t naught to t prime but i don't want to keep writing primes anymore so so i'm saying t right so as okay so in this particular state step i'm just changed t prime to t okay but uh the so there's some t t minus t naught is less than delta epsilon then what happens is that this this one this is less than epsilon right because the tau tau is between t and t naught so of course tau minus t naught is less than delta epsilon so inside thing is less than epsilon times integral t naught to t d tau well this is less than epsilon times absolute value of t minus t naught okay so this is what we get Okay, and this is going to be uh, very needed later on. Now what I'm going to do is, okay, so what's the next step? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this particular thing. Um, so dou phi dou t s tau minus dou phi dou t s t naught. So I'm going to try to find the primitive of this particular function here. So it's a function of tau. So primitive can be phi of tau, right? Phi of tau, the primitive will be, let's see. So the primitive is going to be phi s tau minus tau times dou phi dou t s t naught, okay? Okay. Because t naught is fixed, this is not a function of this is a constant number, okay? Because s in a way I have fixed it, so this is just a number right now, so it doesn't depend on the second variable because t naught is perfectly fixed here. So uh, this is the primitive because as you can see, if you differentiate this, what you get here, so dou phi dou tau minus dou phi dou t, so at s t naught and this is at s tau, right? It's exactly the exactly the thing here, right? So this is the primitive. So this is primitive. Now what I will do here is that 
because I have primitive, I'm going to I'm going to uh, use this primitive in uh, in this particular. So I'm going to use it here. Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's write it, write this down once again here. So absolute value of integral t naught to t and dou phi dou t s tau minus dou phi dou t s t naught d tau right this is and then absolute value so because i have found the primitive uh that means a function whose derivative is basically uh this one right the inside function so then what i can do here is by the fundamental theorem of calculus what this tells me, because you're integrating from t0 to t, this is basically the primitive at uh, t minus primitive at t0. This is followed by um, fundamental theorem. Fundamental theorem, right? And uh, because, and also I have calculated this, this quantity here, this quantity here, because tau and t0 differ by because t and t naught differ by delta epsilon this whole thing whole absolute value is less than epsilon times t minus t naught right so this one now what is the primitive here primitive is phi s tau so phi s t here minus t dou by dou t phi s t naught minus so Primitive at t naught, which is basically phi s t naught plus t naught times dou phi dou t s t naught. Okay. Let's do some grouping here. So this is basically uh, phi s t minus phi s t naught minus uh, t minus t naught dou phi dou t s t naught. Right okay okay so and this is um less than just from the previous step this is less than epsilon times t t minus t naught right absolute value now let's divide by um t minus t naught so what you have is phi s t minus phi s t naught divided by t minus t naught minus dou phi dou t uh, s t naught absolute value is less than epsilon right okay now so uh, as you can see here maybe you can see what i'm doing right because um because what's our gt here gt is basically integral a to b phi s t d s right now i need to prove derivative is basically given by you know a to b uh dou phi dou t uh, ds right at st this is what you need so i'm almost close because i just need to integrate this term so you will see what will happen so let's integrate um so basically i'm, I'm taking another inequality by integrating this uh term here so phi st minus phi s t naught divided by t minus t naught okay and uh, minus integral a to b dou phi dou t s t naught okay now so this will be basically um this is basically uh, less than or equal to integral a to b absolute value of phi s t minus phi s t naught divided by t minus t naught uh, and then minus dou phi dou t s t naught right and i didn't tell you uh, so i'm integrating this with respect to ds so ds and the inside part is basically less than epsilon right that's what we had before so it's less than epsilon here so this will be less than epsilon times b minus a provided you have fixed t such that t minus t naught differ by delta epsilon right 
So what do we have here? So we are almost close. So we are almost close here. Um, so let's see here. So I just need to expand this part. So this is basically um, g of t minus g of t naught divided by t minus t naught, right? And then minus uh, a to b uh, dou phi dou t st naught ds. Why is that so? Because g of t is defined like this, integral a to b phi st ds, right? So you get this, and now this is less than epsilon times b minus a for t minus t naught uh, differing by delta epsilon. So what does this tell me? This is exactly the definition of limit, right? So this is basically telling me that limit t tending to t naught gt minus gt naught divided by t minus t naught is basically integral a to b dou phi dou t uh, s t naught ds right and what is this limit here this is basically the derivative with respect to t of this function gt and which is basically uh, integral a to b phi st uh, ds okay so as you can see here i have taken so um here I have fixed it. So this derivative is at t naught, right? At t naught. And so this is basically uh, the partial derivative of this function is basically uh, you take the derivative inside and that's that's how you prove Leibniz theorem. So this is the conclusion here. So that's how you prove uh, Leibniz theorem. Okay, thank you so much for sticking till the end uh, and I will see you next time. Take care, bye. Thank you.